Right now, scientists are gathering in Montreal to learn more about this treatment. And as Jill found out, it's a treatment with Canadian roots that date back more than 80 years. Bacteria, one of those subjects we prefer not to think about until a tragedy like the one in Walkerton, Ontario. E. coli 0157 leapt from relative obscurity to front page headlines, causing death, fear, and a mistrust of nature. And remember the outbreaks in hospitals, when another bacterium swept the corridors and attacked the most vulnerable, the sick and the elderly? Known as VRE, it was resistant to one of the most powerful antibiotics, vancomycin. And again, we were given a dark reminder of nature's potent force. But what if nature also offered a solution? What if bacteria had a natural enemy? They do. It's called bacteriophage, a virus that kills bacteria, just as bacteria can kill us. What they really are are like a spaceship that carries the genes of that virus from one cell to another cell. The head is then filled with DNA, and they're able to have a mechanism to shoot that DNA into the cell of the bacterium that they're infecting. So, Betty Cutter has been studying phages for more than 40 years. In her lab at Evergreen State College in Washington, she and her students take a bacterium like E. coli 0157 and try to find the corresponding phage that go ahead where the DNA is stored. Once it latches onto the bacterium, it injects the DNA through its tail and infects the bacterium. Daughter phages are then produced inside the bacterium at such an astonishing rate that their numbers eventually cause the cell to burst. The daughter phages then escape, ready to infect more bacteria. Rapid reproduction is the key to its success. Typically, after half an hour, 200 phages are produced. After one hour, 40,000. After 90 minutes, 8 million. And after two hours, there are 1.6 billion phages. Therapy is a relatively new field in medicine. Phages were discovered almost a hundred years ago by a Canadian, Félix Derel. Born in Montreal, Derel was a self-taught microbiologist who first noticed something unusual while doing research in Mexico in the early 1900s. He was investigating an infestation of locusts, trying to figure out a way to control their numbers. So he examined dead insects to determine what was killing them and discovered it was a bacterium. But he also noticed that something else was present in their feces, something that was eating away at the bacteria. First, it had made a revolutionary discovery that nature had its own checks and balances when it came to controlling bacteria. This also caught the attention of a colleague at the Pasteur Institute in Paris, who invited him to his home state of Georgia in the former Soviet Union. With the support of Stalin, who saw the benefits of phage Remember, these were the 1920s and 30s, before the widespread use of antibiotics like penicillin. Still, Derel's work was largely unknown in the West. And once antibiotics did enter the picture, Western scientists saw no need to investigate phages. Antibiotics were hailed as the savior. But by the late 1980s, when superbugs began to emerge, ones that had become antibiotic resistant, Scientists in the West, like Betty Cutter, revisited the subject of phages. Her first visit to Tbilisi was in 1990. That first time, I didn't actually have a chance to see anybody directly using it, and I was very suspicious. And then a few years later, when I had a chance to go back, I had the opportunity to begin to see people actually using it and to talk with, for example, the surgeon at the hospital who use it regularly, for whom it's absolutely a regular part of their clinical practice. And gradually, I became more and more convinced that they had an enormous amount of data and experience, and that people who were clearly very bright and very dedicated people believed strongly in it. But one of the most interesting ones that I saw was a case of a fellow who had been brought in several days before to have his foot amputated. He was a diabetic. He was in his mid-40s and he'd had a severe infection for many months that they simply couldn't get rid of. And the surgeon in the unit where he was being um, treated was the person who had used phage most extensively there and used it in all his surgeries. And he decided 
to try to see if they could use phage to save this foot. So what they had done was to split the foot open and pour phage into it several days before. And I was there when they opened it back up again. And here was this deep wound and not a single sign of purulence. And I heard later that they saved his foot. My reaction was that I had to do something to make it happen everywhere. A lethal bacterium that kills 95% of people with cystic fibrosis. We didn't think that phage would be very likely to work against it, but when my first visitors from Tbilisi came, they brought some of the phage they use against all sorts of other disease problems, wounds and so forth, and this was called piophage, and we got 18 strains from cystic fibrosis patients from a colleague at the University of Washington, and the strains that had been brought from Tbilisi, even though it was halfway around the world, completely wiped out 17 of those 18 strains in test tubes. What sort of options were the doctors presenting you with? Amputation. Ouch. But then he read about a radically different way to treat infections. Just one catch. It was in the former Soviet Republic of Georgia, half a world away, at the Eliava Institute. It was very strange, but it seemed like a lifeline, and uh, I wanted to live. I wanted to get up and work again. He went. I mean, they had no heat, no electrical power, and no water for much of the day. What Eliava did have was treatment that worked. They literally took this stuff and poured it in the wound. Yes. And uh, within three days, the, uh, the infection was totally gone. The stuff they use here at the Eliava Institute is called bacteriophage, or phage, as some say it. Regardless how you pronounce it, the researchers here are absolutely convinced that phages are a fine, natural alternative to antibiotics. Why? Because these harmless little viruses have only one purpose in life, to eat the bacteria that cause infection. A miracle, uh, apparently, of nature is that there seems to be a bacteriophage for every kind of bacteria. And, say the authors of The Killers Within, these viruses may work when antibiotics fail. Given the fix that we're in with the rise of resistance, we need to look at other approaches, and, and phage is just one of several. This approach is nothing new at Eliava, where they've been making phage medication for more than 60 years. Betty Cutter, a microbiology professor from Evergreen University and a frequent visitor to Eliava, believes passionately that phage therapy works. So this one is sensitive. She hopes to convince others that using a naturally occurring virus to fight an infection is a fine idea. These are viruses that absolutely cannot infect human cells or animal cells or plant cells. No chance of getting sick from the treatment. No chance of getting sick from the treatment. The only kind of cells they can infect are bacterial cells. Here's Alfred. It was Cutter who brought a desperate Alfred Gertler here. In all honesty, where do you think Alfred Gertler would be today if he had not come here? He would not have a foot. Oh, yeah, I'm so lucky. Despite Alfred's happy outcome. It turned out great. They did what they promised to do. His treatment would be off limits in Canada or in the United States because phage therapy never has gone through the rigorous testing the U.S. demands. One Toronto musician is convinced phage has saved him, for though Alfred Gertler still needs surgery to repair broken bones, he is back on his feet and playing his heart out. How happy are you that you took this risk and went to Georgia and did this? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled. Like, I am not afraid anymore. I don't have any despair. You know, there's medicine there. So my prospects have suddenly improved.